Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning. It's great to see so many of you here. Uh, welcome to everybody online as well. We're going to start things off with a song. The first one is called Reckless Love. We will have words up for all of the songs and invite you to please sing along with us. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so the breath you breathe your life in me you have been so so Good morning, people of God. Good morning. Welcome to worship, and thank you for being here. The gift of your presence is a gift 
not only to God, but to each other as we join together every Sunday morning. Thanks for being part of worship, both online and here in person. Uh, just a couple of quick logistical notes. Uh, when worship ends today, you know there are two things going on. Our children and youth up through confirmations uh, will begin faith formation during the 10 o'clock hour. So children and youth kindergarten through confirmation age go to the community center and uh, Kat will, and Stephanie and other leaders will get you to your rooms for faith formation. Uh, also, when uh, worship ends today, of course, we are asking all voting members, all members of the congregation to remain in the room so we can let others in and begin the congregational meeting as close to 10 o'clock as possible. So all that will happen in that transition time, so we appreciate kind of being aware of that. And if we need to make some room for some folks who need seats for the congregational meeting, just kind of please do that. And, uh, and uh, especially those who might uh, really need a seat, just be aware of that as 10 o'clock hits and we begin the congregational meeting. Thanks for doing that. Uh, I want to welcome our guest preacher, Pastor C.C. Mills, assistant to the bishop, is here to share the message this morning. Pastor C.C., thank you for being here. Thank you for your ministry. Th and please carry our uh, appreciation back to the whole synod staff and, uh, and our prayers continue for the bishop as he continues his recovery. So thank you for being here today. Um, so as, in light of Pastor C.C.'s message today, uh, you are asked to write down a few notes, uh, really three particular words or phrases, and uh, you should have three cards. If, do you, does everyone here have three cards in their possession that they can use to write down their three core values when the time comes? If not, uh, and, if, or if, and or if you need a pen, raise your hand and keep your hand up until somebody comes to you and can take care of that for you, because uh, We've got some folks around that can help you get your stuff to you. So just keep your hand up until you've got three cards and a writing instrument to take care of that part of our message today. Thank you, Erica and Julie. Thank you for passing those out. Now, Pastor Cece will explain thoroughly what to do with the three cards. Just need to make sure you have them with you now. Uh, I'm leaving that to you, right? <laughs> and uh, when the time comes in her message, so just make sure you've got them. Any other hands up that need something to write with or cards? It's hard for me to see up here, but that's okay. We're good. I think we should be good. All right. A quick note. Oh, and... In light of that, too, once you've written down, you don't need to put your names on the cards, but once you've written down uh, those things on your cards, during <coughs> communion today, we're going to have someone uh, collecting those when you come up for communion. If you don't come up for communion, uh, what should they do, Laurie? <laughs> Just uh, leave them in the basket. I tell you, leave them in the basket on the way out. There's a basket on either side. If you don't bring them with you for communion, just leave them in the baskets on the way out that are at each end. That would be great. And a quick note to members of the Annie Ray Moore Women's Circle who were scheduled to meet at the church at 1 o'clock today for an outing, uh, meet here in Carpool. That has been canceled. Just want to make you aware of that. Please check with your leaders for the next scheduled gathering, okay? Um, Gwen Bader is one of our wonderful 10 a.m. Faith Formation volunteers. Uh, we appreciate our Faith Formation volunteers at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning and other times when we gather. Uh, Gwen would like to share a mission moment with you today. Gwen? Thank you. Good morning. As you know, this is Sunday school kickoff. Are you excited? Yes. Be excited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I want to talk to you a little bit about my experience of Sunday school. Now, I'm really young, but over, oh, that's my grandson, over 30 years ago, <laughs> I was actively involved with Sunday school, had kids in Sunday school, but a nice lady named Sherry Harmon came up to my husband and said, I think you would be a perfect fit for high school Sunday school. Now, he was not doing Sunday school at that time, but Sherry Harmon can be very convincing. And so he took that opportunity. 
And I'm happy to tell you today that it made a difference in his life. He connected with those youth. He grew in his own faith. And it made our family even stronger. Well, we had that great chapter in our lives where we taught Sunday school and were active with the youth group. And that chapter closed. And, well, so I thought. You know how God has a different plan for us. Yes, so that chapter I thought what was closed, it was a long time ago, great memories. But our children grew up, so we were not needed. As a matter of fact, my daughter, Jacqueline, who's now 43 years old, <laughs> she teaches high school Sunday school. And that's, you know, a great thing that's happening. So I got to that place in my life where I wasn't sure where did I fit. But then guess what? Cat kept putting in the bullet, and we need somebody for middle school, Sunday school. And I kept thinking, you know what? That's a great idea. Somebody will step up. Not worried. <coughs> and then I kept seeing it and kept seeing it. And then what happens? I come to church, and I want to I, I wanna make sure I get this right, that there was a song. And this wasn't last week. This was last year that says, oh, I refuse to sit around and wait for someone else to do what God has called me to do myself. Now, I've always thought that's a little bit of a challenge every week for the song, but here I am looking at Kat's E! News, listening to that song, and then, of course, you know there had to be a baptism in there. With the congregation, right, we say, yes, we're going to support the youth as they're baptized. <laughs> There's God talking. So I prayed about it, and I said yes. And I'm going to tell you right now that last year my life was changed because they gave me a gift. And I want to say that that gift is out there for each and every one of you. They have encouraged me, they challenge me, and they have deepened my faith and deepened my connection to this church. And I was given this gift. And I am so fortunate that I get to enjoy this gift again this year. I don't want you to miss out. Now, I told Kat I was going to challenge her to tell me how many empty Sundays there are for K through 5 because she says she's got some gaps in the schedule. Now, maybe you can't commit to every Sunday. I don't want to miss a Sunday with my kids. But maybe you can commit to a Sunday, and it will be a gift for you. I promise you. You will see children light up as they hear about the love of God. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen, and thank you for speaking to us uh, with, I would say, God's voice today, reminding us of how important it is for each of us to do what we can and everything we can and listen to God's call into mission each and every day. Thank you, Gwen. Appreciate that so much. Let's turn to... Uh, our ongoing worship as we think about today's theme and Pastor Cece is here to share a message uh, based on one of the writings of Apostle Paul and we're grounded in love. We, how many times do you hear us saying it's all about grace, it's all about God's love, it's all about becoming love for the world, embodying the grace of God in Jesus Christ. Uh, Gandhi once said, the day the power of love overrules the love of power. The world will know peace. The day the power of love overrules the love of power, the world will know peace. What Gwen just talked about was that power of love transforming her life and transforming other lives as we go about just offering ourselves to be the body of Christ today. And so uh, uh, let's all of us kind of reconnect today and remember and be reminded of the greatest force in the universe, the power of God's love in Christ. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we are thankful for this new season, this new chapter in our lives as First Lutheran Church. We're incredibly grateful for having partners and companions in the journey who join us as we go through life's struggles and life's joys and celebrations. We commend to you this time of worship and we trust that your Holy Spirit will continue to move among us, through us, and 
to others. As we do our work, as we do our worship, praise, and thanksgiving this day, and as we go about life when we leave this place to be the body of Christ for the world. Thank you, God, for this time of worship. We give ourselves to worship to you so that you and together with each other we may mo make the most of this time. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand joined together in our next song, shall we? Join us in singing with every act of love. Bothered by the heart crack Written on the cardboard in her hands Oh, but when she looks him in the eye His heart is broken open wide He feels the hand of God reach out through him As heaven touches earth Oh, 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 oh Once again, welcome to worship. Good to be together. Take a moment to greet each other. Turn, speak to one another, wish each other a happy morning, and <laughs> welcome to worship. Good morning, good morning. How's it coming? Doing all right? Doing better? All right, good. Cat, it's time. <laughs> Stephanie, yeah. I've got a microphone, so y'all share this one, okay? Okay, okay. We'll get next to her. I'll, I'll slide on this side. Thanks. So as our children's message this morning, it's, uh, we're going to not only give thanks for the gift of the written word in the Bible, but also uh, celebrate with our fifth and sixth graders who are getting their youth study Bibles. Should we get them up here? We should get Let's them get and them. their parents up here. Okay. Uh, fifth, sixth graders and your parents, come on up, please. All the words. 
words that you guys will need to say will be on the screens. All right. Go ahead and hear this. All right, so to our youth, when you were baptized, your parents promised many things to help you grow in the Christian faith and life. They promised to share their faith with you, to pray with you, to worship you, and to help you love and serve God and all people by following Jesus. One of the promises we make in baptism is to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures. Your church family promised to help your parents keep those promises. Today we join in taking another step in this journey of promises. So first of all, we ask you parents first, will you continue in the promises you made to God in baptism? If so, please answer, I will with God's help and guidance. Together. I will with God's help and guidance. Now, I'm going to ask the children. When you receive this gift of the word of God, will you read, listen, and take to heart the words written here? Will you read with curiosity, listen with openness, and ask questions in trust? If so, please answer together. We will, with God's help. <laughs> yeah, you, can use, you can use your outdoor voices. <laughs> yeah. Use your outdoor voices. Let's hear that again. We will, with God's help. I don't know these children. <laughs> okay, now parents and caregivers, please place your child's Bible in their hand and read the words on the screen together. Parents, together. Receive the gift of this Bible so that the story of God and God's people may be with you at home, church, and wherever you shall choose to carry it. Congregation, receive the word of God. Learn its stories and study its words. Its stories belong to us all. And these words speak to us all. They tell us who we are. They tell us that we belong to one another. Now, members of this congregation, you were invited to bring a Bible with you, one that holds significance for you or one you use for your personal study and prayer. I invite you to stand and hold your Bible in front of you. Stand up, and if you don't have your Bible with you, stand up and hold your virtual Bible and think of... <laughs> Think, think of the one that you use at home, all right? We do a lot of things virtually these days, so you're going to just have in your mind that Bible that you use. Good and gracious God, you have given us the gift of the Holy Scriptures. Guide us all as we hear the story of God and God's people. Learn about the life and teachings of Jesus and listen for God to continue to speak to us through these words. Together. Holy and loving God. Today we renew our commitment to read and remember you in the stories of our salvation. Encourage us with the help of the Holy Spirit to use these sacred writings for our prayer and inspiration, for the increase of our own faith and devotion, and for the building up of your kingdom. Amen. Got a few more? Yeah. yeah okay. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Awesome. So let's, uh, so fifth and sixth graders, uh, you've got a new Bible. It's a new study Bible. You will use this through your confirmation years and into your youth and adulthood as a way to recognize that God's story is a big story and you're a part of it. Let this story kind of become your story and know that together we're still writing this story. And I ask you, what chapter, what book might you be writing? as part of God's story. Let's congratulate, congratulate our fifth and sixth graders for receiving their Bible. And thank you for coming up this morning. Thanks for sharing this milestone with the congregation.
reading this morning is from the 13th chapter of Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Here ends the reading. God, we are so thankful for all the ways that you journey with us. So as we have come into your house and offered our praise, heard your scriptures, listened to how we live as a community and encourage one another in faith, we ask that you ease our minds, open our hearts, stir your holiness inside of us so that we may receive your proclamation this day and leave this space knowing and aware of how we have been forever changed because of our holy encounter with you. And, O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. It's an odd thing to be human. Human beings like the ideas of knowing what limits, what boundaries are there, sometimes to challenge them, sometimes to achieve them, but we like knowing what's right and what's wrong. What, what are the things that we ought to do and we ought not to do? For me, I think that act of love is why God gave us the Ten Commandments, not so that we could have a checklist towards salvation, but so that we could understand our relationship with God and with one another through the notion, the concept of love. God wanted us to understand that, that our life is better through love. The experience, the acceptance, the, the pouring out, the active notion of knowing that we are love and we are sent to love is what God created us to be. I think if we had gotten that right in the beginning, there would have been no need for the Ten Commandments. But because we are rational beings, God recognized that we wanted us to know, does this please you and does this not? But it really boils down to this simple concept expressed through this letter to the church in Rome. Sharing with them, acknowledging them, this, this concept that we have that is so wonderful. And if we just got that one concept right, if we learned how to love, we wouldn't have to worry about sinning, honestly. We would be so preoccupied with showing love to one another that it wouldn't be there that it boils down to that. We, we don't have to name the specific sins and to name the specific things that we do. We, we can simply look and say, was this an act of love or was it not? I was serving a congregation and we had some from our community who did not have a house in that season and they came to the members of the congregation in the parking lot and would ask them for money and the members of the congregation were nervous about these people approaching them. They wondered whether these people meant harm to them. They wondered if giving them money might help them with whatever, whatever particular thing in life they struggled with. Am I helping an alcoholic find alcohol? Am I helping a drug addict get their fix? I, I don't know. How do you know, pastor? They ask me, when do you give and when do you withhold? I said, if in doubt, feed Jesus. If in doubt, show love. If in doubt, do that. Because actually, none of the ways that, that we give love are verified. No one comes back and gives us an accounting of the way they spent that love that we gave them, whether it's a monetary asset or some of our time. I said, so if in doubt, if you are afraid of what might happen, feed Jesus. Be generous. Show love. 
I think if we could really understand this concept, really take the text that is before us this morning and use it to live our daily lives, we would see things and experience things differently and be kinder to one another. I remember after church one Sunday, someone coming up to me and yelling at me because of something they were upset about that happened in church council that previous week. They had been waiting all week, stewing inside for after worship to come up to me in the line and let me know just how angry they were about what happened. And they came up to me and they were saying things that other members clearly thought were inappropriate. And my response to them was, I'm so sorry that you're feeling that way. What's been going on this week? I was curious about the vehemence, not, not feeling the harm of these words coming to me in a violent fashion, but it made me wonder, this person that's not usually this way has waited all of this time. What could be bothering them? What is behind the anger? And so we made time to listen, and they described a sea of things that had frustrated them at work, things that had not gone well at home, and a recent diagnosis for a loved one, that it was the final straw. What if we, when we face things that were hurting or confusing, we responded in love? Creation has been doing so many different things that God did not intend, and and how do we respond to those? With disdain, with offense, or with love? It's a holy invitation that can change our way of being. It can be the, the center of who we are, that thing that defines us. How do you respond and do things? I often ask congregations, when you, when you go to buy a car, what's the first thing that you do? And most of them say, well, I, I shop around and I look for the one that has the features that I like and try to get the best, the best value for what I'm doing and see who has a cheaper or a better deal. Most people don't say, I start to think with love. They don't say that. When you talk about higher education and which school we're going to go to when we were college age, we, we didn't really think about that. What if we stopped and prayed about it and asked God to show us how this might be love? The Senate office recently got me a new vehicle to use for, for doing the work of the Senate, and I was so excited because it was a hybrid. To me, that's love of creation. The first car they gave me, people kept asking me, don't you like that car? And I was like, no, because I have a hybrid at home. It gets 40 miles to the gallon, and this puppy gets 20. (laughs) Taking time to pause and to wonder and to ask yourself the thing that God is calling you to, that moment that's happening that seems ordinary, how is God calling me to love? When these words were written, it wasn't to say that that you shouldn't have any indebtedness. It wasn't saying that you should not go out and borrow money or do those things. But it was saying, don't wait to love. If pure love is present, then we owe no one anything. Because we're all pouring love into one. If we're so preoccupied with making our neighbor feel peace, know love, feel secure, then we don't have to worry about anything else. It's the reason why Jesus Christ was able to come in the humbleness of a baby, knowing no sin, knowing no pain, knowing no thirst or hunger or any of those things, and offer his life for us. It only could have been love. Who else would have put up with all of that junk except for the sake of love? It's our holy invitation and should define who we are. I'm a Mills child. I am, I am one of Mary Elizabeth's grandchildren. She had seven children. And oftentimes as we went out into the community, people would recognize us. Sometimes it was family features. Sometimes it was our nose or our eyes. Sometimes it was the way that we spoke. 
but most of the time it was our behavior. She raised us with ideas of what love looks like. When you go out into the community, love looks like you're not destroying things, you're not tearing things down, you're respecting things. You're not going in spaces where you're not supposed to go. You're showing respect to both adults and children and anyone you come in contact with, even animals and trees. You have respect for the earth and respect for your neighbor. And when you greet people, you greet people with a smile and often do random acts of kindness. There was an expectation then we, we, when we went out that we would behave in a certain way and they knew who we were. In that same way, your walk with Christ, your following of Jesus should have evidence of love on you. People should be able to see the love inside by your words, your actions, and how you live by your compassion and your patience. So when we think of these things, of, of defining who we are, I know a few weeks ago we talked about who that, they, that the disciples say that Jesus was. But today I want you to think about who is at the center of who you are. If you have the mark of the disciple, if you have the mark of Jesus, it should be love. That should be at the core of who you are and define the things that you do. So many times in our lives, there are other things, other outside influences, other things that distract us. But the notion, the idea of agape love, unconditional love, meaning you can do nothing that's going to make me stop loving you. In fact, my love is going to grow each day regardless of what you do or say to have that. And the nobler thing that the word tells us is not to love those who are kind to us. <laughs> For what big deal is that? But to love those who even wish us harm and to love them all the more because they are showing the most evidence of a need to encounter God's holy love. That's part of who we are. That's part of the core value of the believers of Jesus Christ. So today we're, we're not only talking about this notion of love, which I see evident in the loving way that you gifted these young people with God's holy word. But I want you to understand that you being aware of who you are as the people of God in First Lutheran Greensboro helps you to know what God's mission is for you. What are the marks of this congregation? What are the things that identify you? If someone saw you in the community and I asked them about who you were as a disciple of this church, what things would they know about you or this community that gathers? What do you notice about who you are? Sometimes we have core values that we're not crazy about. <laughs> Some congregations I visit, they recognize they call themselves traditional or stubborn or unyielding. <laughs> Sometimes that helps when you have the tenacity not to stop, to be determined in a way that God is leading you and you won't be distracted from mission. Other times that may take away from it. Core values are not positive or negative. They are truths about who you are and the things that drive you. Sometimes congregations identify core values that they need to work on, that they want to recognize that that's part of who we are. How do we make that about love? One of the congregations in Greensboro, the one that um, raised me, Prince of Peace Lutheran Church, define their core values. And I want to share the words that they found a few years ago when Pastor Matt C.K. came to be with the community. Their mission statement, Prince of Peace is a unique ELC congregation where we lift every voice with the joy of Jesus. Their core values are African descent witness, diversity, community, holy tenacity, and joy. They use those things to define, is this something we should be doing? Is this what God is calling us to do? Because there are a lot of good things that we can do. 
but with core value clarity, with mission clarity, you can determine, is this what God is calling us to do? A few years ago, they have a lot of land and they decided to, to use it to help with uh, growing food because they live in a food desert. And so they had this group called Out of the Garden and someone found them because they recognized as a smaller congregation and an aging congregation that they didn't have the, the, the labor power to be able to staff a garden. So they found this organization, told them to come, no rent or anything, and to grow things on the land. When Pastor Matt came in after this was already in place, he asked, okay, so they're, they're not giving anything to the congregation financially, but are they giving to the neighbors? And they said, no, they grow the food here and then take it somewhere else. But the congregation was ecstatic because the land wasn't laying dormant anymore. Someone was using it. But Pastor Matt said, but if, if you are committed to the community and they're not, well, then we need to talk with them. So there were several meetings held where they talked with out of the garden and said, one of our core values is this community. And so because of that and health and because of that, we need to provide them with healthy food in this um, desert, this food desert. And out of the garden said, no, we don't do that. And Prince of Peace said, well, thank you. Our season in partnership has ended. Without having another partner that would come in and take over caring for the garden, they knew that who God had called them to be was to be in partnership, to be in fellowship, to show love to their neighbors immediately around them, and that this organization, though they were doing great things for another part of Greensboro, that they could not be in partnership there if they weren't committed in that way. So I want you to think about first. You can go ahead and grab your cards and get ready. And that question that was asked of Peter, who do you say that I am? What are the marks of this congregation? Thinking of one word or phrase, I want you to think of three things that are marks of this congregation. What are the ways that God shows up and is present in this place that don't change from year to year? That are things that are true to who you are, that are authentically at the core of who you are as a congregation? What is at the center? What things don't change? Three words or phrases, and you can begin writing those now. Hopefully your neighbors know those things. <laughs> they have witnessed those things. But sometimes Lutherans are good at keeping secrets. <laughs> Honest answers, don't put your name on it. We won't try to get a handwriting sample to figure out who wrote what. Who do you say that you are? How do you experience life at this congregation? What are the marks that make you First Lutheran Greensboro? So I'll say one more thing. The God we serve loves to challenge us. The God we serve loves to, to put things in front of us that may give us an opportunity to show love. And God blesses us with the ability to decide to show love or to withhold it. I hope that in this upcoming week that you find three occasions where you are tempted not to show love to push through that, to pray about it, to ask God to give you the willingness 
to show love in a situation that you may feel like calls for reproach or anger or ignoring. That instead what you do is to show kindness, to show God's love in a way that that person or entity did not expect. I don't care if it's at the counter at McDonald's when they get your order wrong for the fifth time or while you're waiting in Walmart for 30 minutes because the person in front of you doesn't know how to use a debit card. <laughs> Wherever it is, when God gives you that opportunity to respond with kindness, to respond with that agape love that God gave us all, amen. Join us in singing Multiply. Come find us like blazing wildfire. 
Let's join our hearts and minds together as we pray. Shall we? Let us pray. Oh God, you are our source of life and love. And so we thank you this morning for the Apostle Paul reminding us today that love is the supreme and singular law that summarizes all your commands. Help us to remember that for Jesus, love of neighbor was never a passive act of the heart and mind only, but also a tangible act of embodying compassion the way Jesus did. Grant us the courage to follow the way of Jesus so that we are known as people who put our love into action, especially for those who are suffering, especially those for those in need, especially in those that often get overlooked or forgotten. Lord of the journey, and show us the way. This day, oh God, we offer ourselves in solidarity with those facing hurricane and earthquake devastation and recovery. We know that natural disasters are always harder on the poor. We're thankful for aid and relief work through Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, the Red Cross, and so many others. Show us how we can help and let your generosity flow through us to where it is needed most as we help and pray for our sisters and brothers recovering in Morocco, in Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Lord of the journey, show, show us, us the way. way. Gracious God, as we gather this day, there are people in our hearts and minds we wish to pray for. We're thankful for loved ones who have recently died, including Dorothy Cheryl. Pray for her family and friends as we continue to remember and remind them that your love and your life are stronger than death. Help us to be companions of those grieving and share the journey with them so they know they're not alone and so they know that your love continues to hold them and heal them. We pray for others who are sick, others who have asked for our prayers, others in need of your comfort and your peace, including Cameron, Jane, Sarah, Rachel, Dave, Gordon, Anne, Darren, Casey, and Joanne, and other people, O oh God, that are on our hearts and minds this day as we gather, we take a moment now to name them before you, either silently or out loud. May we continue to be the people who show love, the people whose love brings healing, hope, and encouragement, Lord of the journey. Show us the way. Lord, we give thanks for and pledge our support to our faith formation leaders and volunteers, those who serve to inspire and mentor and care for the faith of all our children, youth, and adults. As this new season of faith formation begins, we commend it to you, and we ask that your hand of blessing be upon all of us, all who teach, all who lead, all who serve and that your Holy Spirit would guide all our efforts to nurture one another's faith as we follow Jesus together. Lord of the journey, show, show us, us the way. Lord. All these things we pray through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray as we pray together now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Kingdom and power and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So in God's love, we are provided with a meal of God's love to not just hear about God's love in our lives, or think about God's love in our lives, but to actually feel it, see it, taste it, and take it in. So we join together now as we prepare for this meal of God's love flowing within and through us. Please join in in the bold print. Welcome to God's family meal. A foretaste of the feast to come. Come as you are. All are invited. All are welcome at this table. Here are bread and fruit of the vine, gifts of God's good creation. 
taken, blessed, and shared by Jesus, his whole self, body, life, and spirit, given in love for you, for me, for the world. Satisfying our hunger and thirst for life, assuring us of God's abiding presence, forgiving us when we fail and fall short, remembering Christ's way of self-giving. We are the body of Christ today, gifts of God's good creation, claimed, blessed, and shared by God, our whole lives, bodies, lives, and spirits, given in love through Christ for the world. Feeding the hungry, welcoming the stranger, doing God's work with our hands and voices, showing Christ's self-giving love to one another, embodying God's life-giving love for the world. Come as you are. All are welcome. Receive Christ's sacrament for the church. Become Christ's sacrament for the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Community assistants, please come forward. Just a reminder, as you come forward, bring your cards with you. If you don't happen to come forward uh, and would like to just put them in the baskets on your way out, that's great too. Thank you.
just a reminder as we dismiss, uh, make room for others to come in, but uh, if you need to go with a child or children to get them to the community center and get the faith formation, then just come back as soon as you can, and we'll get the meeting started as soon as we can get everybody in the room. Thanks. Appreciate it. Let's say this together. God's love now sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live. We wastefully cast the seed, not knowing what will grow. Our hearts will be transformed. Our hearts will be transformed. Our sharing makes it so. Surprise us once again, O oh Lord, we humbly pray. With love beyond our wisdom, Christ be our truth and way. Amen. Join us in singing People of God. If you're a faith formation leader who's meeting with youth and kids, Kat's got your ballots for you, so go ahead and into the community center, and Kat will get that ballot to you, okay? Now go with Christ and go as Christ to love and serve God's world. Thanks be to God. And be seated if you're staying for the meeting, please. <laughs>
Laurie Suggs. Laurie, where's Laurie?